Come with us this time to the historic city of Bath, where we visit the original Roman baths and the modern upgraded version. We visit all the must-do sites, including the picturesque Pulteney Bridge and the impressive Bath Abbey. We try some local delicacies and eat in some amazing restaurants, including one that would be perfect for a first date. So come with us while we check out this fantastic city break. We arrived in Bath by car, but do remember these historic towns were not built for traffic, so allow plenty of time. And many hotels don't have their own car parks, so parking at some of the long stays can be a bit of a walk to your hotel. We started at the Theatre Royal, heading north for a walking tour of the famous sites of the city. Heading towards Queen Square, we passed the Giggling Squid, a highly recommended Thai restaurant, However, we had another venue in mind. Instead, we headed to Hall and Woodhouse, a bar and restaurant with a great quirky personality, whose signature feature was this large vaulted atrium along with an impressive staircase leading up through. Plus some eccentric quotations and decor that really helped set the mood. After a long drive, finding a parking space and dropping the bags at the hotels, we were definitely ready for some lunch. But we only had a light bite to eat as we were saving ourselves for a fantastic dinner reservation that evening. And the only shame was the roof terrace, the reason we had booked the restaurant, was unfortunately closed as the weather was being somewhat temperamental. Suitably refueled, we cut across Queen Square to the Royal Avenue to get the best view of the Royal Crescent. And coming in for closer inspection, at the end you will find one Royal Crescent, a Georgian house and heritage museum, if that's your thing. Then following down to Brock Street, this takes you to the Circus, another fine example of Georgian townhouses, this time, surprisingly, in a circle. However, it was time to head back into town for our most important appointment of the day, a trip to the Roman Baths. But first, on our right, we pass the historic Pump House. This is where, in the height of English aristocracy, people came to take the waters, believing they had medicinal purposes. This venue definitely needs to be booked in advance, whether you're sampling their morning bakery and brunch or their afternoon tea. However, we opted to skip it as we had plans the next day to rejuvenate ourselves and heaven knows we needed it. Our priority was to make our pre-booked reservation at the Roman Baths. You could chance it on the day, but I wouldn't recommend it as this place gets particularly busy on certain days and with large groups as well. And it's a long way to come to miss out on the key attraction of the city. Admission price at time of filming was £21.50 for a midweek visit, slightly more for the weekends, and rising up to £29 maximum during peak season. The price, however, does include a complimentary audio guide, which also comes in up to 12 different languages. All of which explain the rich history of this site, the UK's only hot water springs which still feeds the baths to this day. Moving in from the upper balcony, the models explain how the site used to look complete with roof and you get to see some of the original foundations that have been preserved. You also get to understand the working history of the site with preserved exhibits supported by interactive elements to help bring the backstory to life. So these you can pretty much do at your own pace, depending upon your level of interest. Moving out onto the spa courtyard at the lower level, you will often meet characters in historical costume, helping bring the experience even more to life. As it was getting late in the afternoon, you may also notice that the torches had now been lit around the spa pool. The spa generally closes around 6pm year round. 
so in the winter months the sun will often set before actual closing time. So a great tip is to actually make it in just before last admission and you will actually get to see the entire spa pool lit up at night by torches. Very, very atmospheric. Continuing through, you will find a wishing well pool where people try to get it into the bucket in the middle. Well, we're saying you've got to uh, wish for something you want, so here we go. What can I say? What a shot. Moving back out into the courtyard for the final time, you will actually see where the spa waters enter into the main pool. However, this is not the actual hot spring itself. And moving through, you will find another basin that sits between the Roman spa and the back of the pump house. Here you will see water bubbling up and through, but you need to head indoors and deeper down in the site, you will actually find the famous hot spring itself. And if feeling brave enough, can actually try the water yourself. But I assure you, it is an acquired taste. Tour complete and leaving through the obligatory gift shop. We circled around the far side of the Roman Baths and Abbey to experience even more of this incredible UNESCO World Heritage Site. We had, however, not planned to visit the Abbey that day, as being a Sunday, it is a place of worship and it's scheduled to do it the following day. So do be mindful of that if visiting at the weekend. So instead, we headed to another of Bath's institutions, Sally Lund's Historic Eating House. Home to the fabled Bath Bun, but not without some controversy. So we tried one with cinnamon and one as a more traditional cream tea and both were equally tasty. Many believe the bath bun is smaller and with added fruit. The Sally Lun bun is lighter and larger and more like a brioche. And the site also has a museum in the original basement. So not as to offend anybody, we just decided to try both and keep everybody happy. So, if you're enjoying this video and our tour of the historic city of Bath, we please ask you to hit that like button to show us and hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate the support and will help us bring you even more videos like this in the future. And moving through the picturesque Abbey Green, here you can connect through into the more modern part of the city centre and the main retail district. However, there was no shopping time for us as it was time to head back to our hotel and check in. So we booked at the Apex Hotel, a good mid-range hotel with a good central location. We took advantage of a Sunday night offer for a reduced rate if we spent the equivalent amount on food and drink but effectively meant we got lunch on our departure day for free. We booked a city room, which was spacious enough and well appointed. The hotel also had a complimentary spa pool, but we did not use for reasons will become apparent. Though so after freshening up and getting dressed up, we headed over to the highly recommended and award-winning Italian restaurant Sotto Sotto. This had every inch the feel of a great date night restaurant. There were no shortage of great dining options in Bath, but this place really stood out to us due to the setting. Located in the vaulted basements of the historic buildings of Parade Gardens. We both had mushrooms stuffed with goat's cheese to start, followed by a beef ragu and a rack of lamb as choice of mains. The food was equally as impressive as the venue, and that's saying a lot. And for dessert, we had panna cotta and a white chocolate mousse, which were both a perfect end to an incredible meal. Coming out at dusk only added to the amazing setting of walking along parade gardens to head back into the city centre for a final nightcap, where we headed to Milton Street home of the Ivy, another great choice, but we went for an equally lush venue, The Botanist. 
However, approaching the host stand, you might expect to be met by a charismatic Frenchman. For those in the UK who watch the programme will instantly recognise this as the first dates restaurant. This impressive Grade 2 listed building is known as the Octagon and was a private chapel of the well-to-do of Bath Society. We visited before the current season started filming, but now would expect to see Fred, Merlin and the team looking after nervous romantics on their blind dates. Which, if went well, might be ushered out to the outside terrace for, well, you can use your imagination. So what can I say? We were obviously ahead of the trend in finding these great locations. And even a trip to the restroom was an adventure, but it was time to call it a night as we had an early start in the morning. So we were booked at the early morning slot at the modern reincarnation of the Roman baths, the impressive Therme Bath Spa. Located just down the street from the Roman Baths on, you've guessed it, Bath Street. Opposite the main building, you will find the Cross Bath. Private spa facility for those who don't like mingling with the masses and have deep pockets. Fed by the same natural spring as the Roman Baths. Two hour sessions cost from £41 during the week and £46 at the weekend at time of filming. You unfortunately could not film inside. However, they have the more traditional sauna and steam rooms and some others that are a little out there. We felt the Minerva hydrotherapy pools could have been a bit warmer. But the showstopper is the rooftop pool with views of Bath. However, would recommend maybe considering the evening slots as stay open till 9.30. Feeling suitably reinvigorated, we returned to Bath Abbey to experience it on a quieter Monday morning. Although we are not overly fascinated with places of worship, this was one iconic building we felt we had to make an exception and make the effort to come and see. Entry was £7.50 at time of filming and could simply be bought from the welcome desk at the reception as you entered the Abbey. We had considered doing a tower tour, which was an additional £15, which would have given us the best views over the Roman baths and the surrounding city and countryside. However, this can only be done as part of a 60 minute tour and we decided we wanted to spend that time fitting in some other local attractions. The site itself dates back as far as 675 AD. However, the Abbey, as we currently know it, dates back as far as 1499 AD. So whether you're religious or not, this is definitely a site that is worth seeing. So be sure to check their schedule of services and events. And as always, We'll put links in the description for all the attractions we visited in this video. So all that was left to do was to take a walk down to the famous weir at the River Avon, taking in some of the covered Victorian arcades and marketplaces along the way. However, if you are looking for the ultimate hotel to stay at for perhaps a weekend in Bath, we would suggest the Gainsborough Hotel right next to the Thermae Bath Spa. Not only a member of the small luxury hotels of the world group, its own private spa is fed by the same natural spring as the Roman baths. However, bringing our tour to an end, we made our way down to the River Avon and the iconic site of the Weir at Pulteney Bridge. There are no shortage of boat tours available, should that be how you want to experience this close up. However, we, like most people, just decided to take a gentle stroll across the bridge, taking in the small boutiques and shops over its span, and then down this staircase on the far side, 
where you can get as close as possible to the water's edge at a small cafe and watch the world go by. Parade Gardens on the far side offers you an equally good view but you actually have to pay to go in it. However on this far side you're actually closer to the weir and it's free. Which about wraps up our time in Bath. So even if you're not a fan of Jane Austen or Bridgerton you can see why this city is an absolute must do on anyone's UK bucket list. So we hope you've enjoyed our highlights of our time in Bath and check out another one of our inspirational travel videos up here. Thanks again for watching.